I'm Vinny Politan. Thanks so much for joining us here on Closing Arguments. This hour, we have a lot of stories to get to. We're going to begin with the Delphi murders. Abby Williams and Libby German, two teenagers. Um, just doing what teenagers do, right? It's a day off from school, unseasonably warm. They go for a little walk in the, in the woods, on the trail. They're on their phones, etc. End up murdered. And the case has all these strange, bizarre clues. It's very suspicious people in this really small town. And now, finally, like five years later, an arrest of someone who was on no one's radar. Unless if you were going to CVS to get your pictures developed. Richard Allen is his name. There's his latest photo. He didn't process this one, though. It was the, uh, the uh, local sheriff was taking care of that. But there he is. He's locked up. But he's not necessarily staying quiet. He has apparently written a letter to the judge. Take a look. Take a listen. In the cause listed above, I, Richard M. Allen, hereby throw myself at the mercy of the court. I am begging to be provided with legal assistance in a public defender or whatever help is available. At my initial hearing on October 28th, 2022, I asked to find representation for myself. However, at the time I had no clue how expensive it would be just to talk to someone. I also did not realize what my wife and I's immediate financial situation was going to be. We have both been forced to immediately abandon employment, myself due to incarceration, and my wife for her personal safety. She has had to abandon our house for her own safety. What little reserve there is will fail to even maintain the original residence. Again, I throw myself at the mercy of the court Please provide me whatever assistance you may. Thank you for your time in this most urgent matter. Sincerely, Richard M. Allen. Well, I've seen guys like this in court before. You know, they're in there like, nah, I don't want that public defender. I'll get my own attorney. And then when all of a sudden it's time to get an attorney and pay for it, it's like, whoa, wait a minute, I don't have that kind of money. Right, you get a public defender. But as we know, Public defenders are some of the best defense attorneys there are. They know the prosecutors better than anyone else. They know the court system. They know the judges. Um, unfortunately, a lot of them get stuck with guilty clients. And that may be why sometimes they lose their cases, because their clients are guilty. It has nothing to do with their skills. Anyway, so how did I find out about this letter? Well, I'm on Twitter, right? And there was this tweet from this incredible investigative producer for HLN and the host of the Down the Hill podcast, which covers these Delphi murders. Her name is Barbara McDonald, and she's in studio tonight. Great to see you, Barbara. It's great to see you, too. Give Hello. me the backstory on this letter. Like, where did you come across it? When, when, and when you first read it, what did you think about it? And, it, and what does it mean? It's some letter, isn't yeah. it? I mean, most people who are reading it are going, wow, uh, we didn't expect this. I found out that there was a letter today. I called the court, got a copy of it. And uh, it's a handwritten letter that he submitted while he was still in the White County Jail. He is now in protective custody in state custody. But while he was still at the White County Jail, he wrote this letter and sent it to the court. And there's some really interesting stuff that he writes in the letter. You can see his handwriting here. He- What about that handwriting? A lot of us were talking about that today. Yeah, you know, it's, um, I guess he doesn't have many options in, in jail to use a typewriter or a computer to, to write the letter. But, you know, he's begging in this letter. He sounds desperate. Um, a lot of people are making comment about his statement, as you did, that, you know, he didn't know it would be so expensive to hire an attorney. Well, yeah, it, it is expensive, especially when you're facing double murder allegations. In, in the highest profile case ever to come out of that part of the state. I mean, Absolutely. let's be honest, this, this case was bigger than big. It went unsolved for so many years. And then this guy, Richard, you've been out there so many times. Yes. Did you ever go to the CVS? Just all the time. You did? Pretty much every time I've been in town, I've shopped there. I've gone there to pick up medicine. I've gone there to pick up items I'd forgotten wow. on my trip. Because it's a small town, right? It's a very small town. It's one of the few places to get stuff like that when you're in Delphi. And I've talked to family members of both girls who have shopped there regularly. The sheriff shopped there regularly. Deputies um, shopped there regularly. I mean, you know, it, it was just 
it's basically the corner store if you're in Delphi. Wow. And, and I mean, for the, for the family, they were always thinking like, the person responsible could be living among us. And you know and he was. And if he's if he's if this is the guy, right? If this is the guy, exactly. He is innocent until he's proven guilty. So at this point he is considered innocent. Um, but the family members have been looking for this person high and low. I mean, they tell me they sit in traffic and look at the drivers in the cars next to them to see is that the person, you know? Is this who we're looking for? So they're all looking, the sheriff is looking, but they're still going into the CVS and shopping and nobody is putting two and two together that this could be the guy. It's unreal. And there's a picture of the CVS. So something we heard in the letter was that his wife had to move out of their house. And we've seen video of, of his house. Like, are the people in Delphi out there with like pitchforks and stuff? Or are they exaggerating no, I, a little bit here? I think here? it's probably more the media attention. And I... Oh, they don't like us? Well, you know, it's, it's a lot of a lot of attention on what used to be a very quiet street. And, you know, the neighbors have told me that they see cars driving by all the time. Neighbors have put out ropes blocking off their, their driveways and their grass so that people don't park there. Uh, when the news first broke last week that he was under arrest, yeah, they had, everybody was out there trying to get video. People have been trying to walk around the property and, you know, I'm sure for a woman living alone that probably is a pretty intimidating situation with so many people suddenly interested in you and And probably a lot of them from outside of town as well, right? It's not just your local well, Delphi of, neighbors. Probably a lot of podcasters and YouTubers as yeah. well, you know, trying to get a story yeah. So what was your reaction? I mean, you've covered this story for so many years. What was your reaction when this man was arrested? I think like everyone else, who? Who? Who's this guy? Where did he come from? How long has he been on the radar? He's not somebody that I have seen talk of. He's not somebody that my sources knew about or talked about. Um, so he definitely seemed to sort of come out of left field. My understanding is he hasn't really been on their radar as a suspect for uh, very long at all. Um, and hopefully we're going to know soon as he starts making some court appearances what evidence they have against him and why they believe he's the guy and why now? Bridge. Like, what, what happened now? Because the, the other thing that was happening out there was this guy, Kagan Klein, right? Yes. The guy who was accused of child pornography um, and who was apparently had a social media site where he used a fake picture of a male model to entice little girls, right? right? Um, but he was, he was interacting with, with Libby and, and Abby that, to that some morning. To some degree, and we don't know exactly what that interaction is. Uh, I do know that uh, Libby's sister, Kelsey, did get in touch with that fake profile while the girls were missing and, and inquired. She was working with a friend and they reached out through the friend's profile and said, hey, you know, do you know anything? And the response from whoever was using the profile at that time was, oh, I'm sure she'll turn up. I was supposed to meet her, um, but, you know, she didn't show. So the police have all that information. They have all that text messages. They have Kegan's phone. So if there is that evidence, hopefully we'll find out what that link is. And we only have a couple seconds here. I gotta bring in my think tank there. Mm -hmm. I, just, I, can, I can see them, they're chomping at the bit right now. Um, what does your gut tell you right now? Do you think more people could potentially be arrested here, connected to all of this? I think there's definitely that possibility. Um, we haven't heard the story around this guy. We were expecting that at the press conference for them to say, this is the guy and this is why we believe he's the guy. We haven't gotten that yet. So he is charged with murder in Indiana, as I'm sure you're very well aware, that could still be as an accessory or accomplice. So, you know, what exactly is he accused of? We don't know that yet. We shall see. Barbara McDonald, uh, Down the Hill podcast. Download it, listen to it. She's on top of this story. Trust me. Barbara, great to see you. Nice to see Thanks you. Thanks so too, much for Jenny. coming in. All right, let's bring him in. Our think tank. Join us tonight in Atlanta, Georgia, criminal defense attorney Eklund Mercy in Los Angeles, California, former federal prosecutor and author of Harvard to Hashtag, My Journey from Big Law to Business Owner, Nima Romani's with us. And in Phoenix, Arizona, the attorney who represented Jody Arias and hates her more than you. He's also the author of the book series Trapped with Ms. Arias. Kirk Nurmi is with us. All right, Eklund, what, what, what's going on here? He was shocked 
how much it costs just to talk to one of you criminal defense attorneys. What are you doing to these suspects? Well, you know, it's expensive, and it's expensive to just deal with. Just to more. talk? He it's just expensive. wanted to talk. The issue is, is that this happens so often. Um, nobody ever plans on getting charged with murder, and um, there's not like a... A, like a pay schedule for people on how much a murder can cost. Now, a, uh, a murder like this with two with two with two victims and um, the timing, any defense attorney is going to clock him pretty high. So um, it is it is a basic like a punch to the gut. But I will commend him on um, actually sending the letter that was well written. It didn't provide any information to put, you know, to, you know, it did not uh, add any information that would, you know, be used against him. And he essentially said that he thought he was going to have the money and didn't. So the fact that he did it close in time, he's not trying to prolong He's not trying to prolong the investigation or prolong the court hearing. He's really just trying to give representation. And according to the Sixth Amendment, he has the right to for a zealous uh, and competent representation. So I don't see any problems with that. He's going to get a public defender. Yeah, and this is not an easy trial. Right? In any case, it takes five years with all these suspicious characters circling around. Uh, these two poor uh, little girls and that part of Indiana uh, is not going to be easy. Um, I'm, I'm going to skip you for just a second, Neem. I usually go to you second, but I'm going to go to Kirk because Kirk at one point was a public defender before he went into private practice. Um, Kirk, these are the kind of these are the kind of guys you used to get, huh? Yeah, you know, back in 2009 when I had that Jody Arias file handed to me, I had no idea who she was. And I would say if I did, I would have ran away, grabbed my briefcase, and gone home. And there's a lot of public defenders in the Delphi area right now hiding under their desk, hoping they're not the person. Do, do, do you get? Because do you get? Do you get any choice? Can you say no? Like say, listen, not nah, not nah, can can uh, can Billy or somebody else do this one? Are you allowed to do that if you're in the office? Generally, not really, especially not in the death penalty unit. And I, you know, back in Maricopa County, I don't know how it works in the Delphi area, but if this this could become a death penalty case potentially, there could be a ton of other charges. And of course, these private attorneys aren't going to want to take it anyway, so they're going to quote really high. They're going to quote Nima Romani type rates just to avoid <laughs> taking a case like this because who wants everything that comes with it? I certainly wouldn't want everything that came with Miss Aries. That's why I would have ran. So there's going to be a lot of public defenders that are going to be hiding from this case because they don't want to do it. This is a high profile in the worst way. We've already heard the judge talk about videos of his family members being put up. Things like this can happen to attorney. No one's going to want to touch this, but somewhere some public defender is going to draw the short straw. But you know, Kirk, Neiman doesn't have to pay those um, high California gas prices, so he doesn't have to charge as much anymore because hmm. he's got those electric cars, right? Made by that, that guy who's flying into space. All right, Nima, you, you heard the letter. Um, you saw the letter. Your thoughts about this defendant from the prosecutor's side, right? Like, all right, what do you think you're dealing with here? Look, it's a tough case, Vinny. Like you said, it took him five years to find him. There's clearly at least one other suspect. Now, I don't know if law enforcement is being genuine, right? They're holding that probable cause statement close to the vest. They want to keep it under seal. They say there's investigations ongoing. I don't know if there really are other suspects or they just want to not make it public in response to what the media is. But like Kirk said, when you have a, when you have a judge who already can't handle the heat and has recused himself because it's too high profile of a case, imagine the defense attorney. Her knees, I'm going to say plural, who have to handle this likely capital case. You got your mandatory appeals. I mean, the entire world is watching. This is going to take all of your time. If you're a lawyer, it doesn't matter whether you're a prosecutor or a defense lawyer handling a case like this.